This is a battle we've been waiting for on SICW Wrestling Explosion. Hello, I'm Larry Matisik. Nobody really expected it, but here it is. Flash Flanagan versus Ron Powers. Once partners and they seem to click. Now enemies and today's collision proves it. After today, can you imagine if they bump heads in the Royal Belleville Rumble next Saturday, October 12th at the Scottish Rite in Belleville? Think about it. And there's more on today's edition of Explosion, so stick around after these messages. Once more, the exciting 2013 season proved that the Gateway Grizzlies are an important part of the St. Louis and Metro East sports scene. Every game is fun for fans of all ages, hustling and hard-hitting. The Grizzlies always provide plenty of bang for the buck. In addition, the GCS ballpark is the perfect place to enjoy baseball. The organization, the facility, part of our community. Baseball is America's game, and the Gateway Grizzlies do it right. Keep in touch with new developments. Go to gatewaygrizzlies.com. Unique and affordable gifts and collectibles on the Internet are available at the Black Bear Haversack Trading Post. Go to blackbearhaversack.com. Semi-precious stones, bone horn and soapstone items, abalone shells, genuine coyote and water buffalo teeth pendants, products for Civil War, Medieval and Renaissance reenactments, and so much more. For a 10% discount, mention SICW number 7 when you place your order. It's BlackBearHaversack.com for top quality at reduced prices. The Big Texan is on his own, all by himself, for a handicap tag match against the popular Shorty Biggs and Brandon Gallagher, Shorty Biggs. Encouraging that crowd to clap and then mocking Big Texan a little as he puffs out his chest, struts around the ring sort of like Big Texan. Shorty Biggs and Brandon Gallagher can tag in and out of the ring as they do in a regular tag team match. However, the Big Texan's by himself. Now, next Saturday, October 12th, at the Scottish Rite in Belleville, the Big Texan will not be by himself. He's in a tag match with his regular partner, Waco, and there's rumors that they've been having some problems with each other. They'll be going against Heath Hatton and Gary Jackson. That's a pretty good tag team match. And, of course, at the end of the evening, there's the Royal Rumble. And they'll all be involved in the Royal Rumble. And Honky Tonk Man will be there next Saturday. The Honky Tonk Man in town in Belleville at the Scottish Rite. So come and meet the Honky Tonk Man. Meet and greet at 7.15. I'll be there with him. We'll sign autographs, talk to you about wrestling, whatever you want to do. And then the Honky Tonk Man probably will do some singing and dancing during the card. And it's a terrific card, believe me. That tag match really just sets the tone for a lot of really fine matches. Flash Flanagan there, Ron Powers there, Ricky Cruz there, Dave Vaughn there, Jake Durden there. Names are endless. It'll be a big night for the Fraternal Art of Police, Lodge 262, as they sponsor a terrific night of action in Belleville, Illinois. First time there in a while. It'll be fun. Don't miss it. Great location at the Scottish Rite, too. The big Texan lowers that shoulder right into Shorty Biggs and drops him. Biggs whipped to the ropes again by Texan. Texan bends over, and Shorty Biggs with a fly, oh, tries for the sunset flip, and Big Texan thought he was going to hit him in the head, but Shorty Biggs got away, and then a drop kick right behind the knee. Oh, smart move by Shorty Biggs. Tag made to Brandon Gallagher. Shorty Biggs definitely outsmarted the Big Texan there. And then, in stereo, Brandon Gallagher and Shorty Biggs, a kick to either side of the head of the Big Texan. Jim Harris, the referee, dives right in, gets a count of two before Texan lifts his shoulders. Brandon Gallagher into the air, knee drop on Big Texan. Again, a count of two before the Big Texan pushes his way out of trouble. The Big Texan got into some trouble here very early, didn't he? You gotta be careful when you're in one of those two-on-one matches. Nice drop kick by Brandon Gallagher. Good drop kick. Gallagher goes for a pin. Didn't last. And it was a clubbing blow to the back by the Big Texan that freed him from underneath. And then a second clubbing blow to the back. Now that he's up on top, that would knock the wind out of Gallagher. Gallagher gives away a lot of weight. I'll bet he gives away probably close to 100 pounds, maybe a little bit more than 100 pounds to the Big Texan. How do you like that blue hair, by the way? A big chop into the chest by the Big Texan. Maybe the Big Texan has blue hair or red hair. Who knows? It's under a mask. And, of course, Waco. We don't know about him either. Everything under a mask. Big chop there by the Big Texan. Look, he's still flexing his knee from where Shorty Biggs caught him with that drop kick right behind the kneecap. Things take a toll in a wrestling match, and that might too. Brandon Gallagher, smart move, got out and tagged. Shorty Biggs, big 
Biggs quickly rolls up Texan count of one, and Texan busts free. Biggs is frustrated. He hooks the head of the big Texan. Shorty Biggs, oh, has his head tied up, and the big Texan takes the easy way out, puts his foot on that bottom rope. Shorty Biggs waits for Texan to come up. Texan saying something to, to Shorty Biggs, daring him about something. He's taunting him. Ah, I see what it was. The only way you're going to get a headlock on me is if I'm on my knees. Oh, he's trying to make Shardy Biggs angry, and Shardy Biggs just took advantage of it. Hey, if you're that dumb to get down there, I'll put it on you. Oh, Greco Roman back body drop. That was a dandy one. A Greco Roman back body drop on Shardy Biggs by the big Texan, and Shardy's a little, whoa, he's a little woozy. He's a little out of it right there. Where's my partner? He's reaching inside the ring to try to tag somebody. And the only guy getting tagged is him by the big Texan. A bunch of kicks and an elbow drop. Biggs gets out of it, but that Greco-Roman back body drop shades of Luthez. So many people have copied that move. I don't know if they all do it as good as Luthez did, but they use it well, and it's a very good move. Enziguri by Shardy Biggs on the big Texan. Hey, Shardy really giving a good account of himself against the big Texan. And Brandon Gallagher, now he's going airborne up in the air. Big Texan getting frustrated. You saw him slam his fists on the mat. Gallagher off the top rope. Whoa! He almost takes Big Texan backwards. It doesn't quite work. Instead, Big Texan goes forward. Gallagher gets his shoulder up. The Big Texan lifting Gallagher, pushing him to the ropes, whipping him. He catches Gallagher, puts him in the air, and oh, this is not a good spot for Gallagher. That backward slam by Texan pitches Gallagher clear across the ring, then a boot to the chest of Shardy Biggs, and Biggs caught that one in the throat, and now Texan stomps on Shardy Biggs. Gallagher, he's all groggy, he walks into the choke, and it's a choke slam by the big Texan on Brandon Gallagher. Now the big Texan's feeling his oats, He's getting in control. He hits the ropes. You know what this means. Giant splash on Brandon Gallagher. And I think that's it. The Big Texan wins a two against one handicap tag match on SICW Wrestling Explosion. Saturday, October 12th is a royal night for a rumble at the Belleville Brawl. The Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 262 brings Wrestling Explosion to the Scottish Rite on Frank Scott Parkway West in Belleville, Saturday, October 12th. Meet WWE star The Honky Tonk Man and me, Larry Matisek. A Belleville Rumble headline stars enter the ring every minute. Elimination when thrown over the top rope. Last man left wins. Powers, crews, flash, and more. For our tickets, call 235-3350. It's The Honky Tonk Man in a Belleville Brawl at the Scottish Rite, Saturday, October 12th. For the best deal on pre-owned cars and trucks, check out King Auto Sales in Cahokia, Illinois. Buy here, pay here. It doesn't get easier than that. Easy terms and financing on the spot for the best deals on all makes and models of pre-owned cars and trucks. You can't beat King Auto Sales, 2915 Camp Jackson Road, Cahokia, Illinois. That's King Auto Sales in Cahokia. Where the customer comes first, phone 337-7050. Referee is Jay King. Introducing first, to my left, from Indianapolis, Indiana, weighing 225 pounds, Flash Flanagan. His opponent, to my right, from St. Charles, Missouri, 284 pounds, the former classic champion, Ron Powers. Can you remember when Ron Powers teamed up with Flash Flanagan and they defeated the legends, Butch Reed and Cowboy Bob Orton? They're not buddies now. What's Flanagan have to say here? Flash wants to talk before this match starts. Pay attention to me. Hey, this didn't have to come down like this. All you had to do was listen to me and you would be a winner. right now. You can walk on back to the back and get counted out and save yourself this beating. Oh yeah? I somehow didn't think so. 
I didn't think Mr. Powers would leave, but again, some mind games right there. And right away, Flanagan picks up a chair. You remember what happened when they got into at the end of that three-way a couple weeks ago when Ricky Cruz was involved. They tried to work together. It fell apart completely. They ended up daring each other with chairs, threatening each other with the kendo stick, almost going to war. Flash Flanagan. He's got a mean streak one mile wide, and he's clever. He's tricky. He likes to work behind their back if he can. He's always trying to play a game, trying to do something to throw somebody off stride. Ron Powers, you know him. You've seen him for a long time here in the St. Louis area. He's been in main events. Ron Powers is like an explosion waiting to happen and a volcano waiting to erupt. He's heard a lot of cheers and he's heard a lot of boos. He's done a lot of things that made people mad. He split Ricky Cruz's head wide open. He took Danny, Danny Boy Hawkins' head off when he won the classic wrestling title originally, when he was the second man ever to hold that crown. And of course, that's what all this comes down to. Both of these men want the classic wrestling title. And it looks like right now, to get there, they're going to have to go through each other. They certainly are going to have to go through each other today. Flash Flanagan and Ron Powers Powers chases Flanagan off the apron. When Flanagan said before the match, listen to me, Ron, well, that's not going to work because Ron Powers, as promoter Herb Simmons, Ron Powers pretty much doesn't listen to anybody but himself. He marches to the beat of his own drummer. And Flanagan cuts Powers off after a chase around the ring. Flanagan hooking the head of Powers. Powers bulls, just bulls Flanagan across the ring and then slams. Look at that, head butts, chest first then into his chest. Arm whip into the corner by Powers and Flanagan says, okay, we'll bail out on that. I don't need to be turned into a pancake in the corner by Ron Powers. Powers like a bull charging in there on Flash Flanagan. Two big, tough men. I don't think there's anybody tougher than these two in SICW today or ever has been. Now, there may be a few come close. And there might be some on the way to coming close. Maybe a Jake Durden or somebody like that. But as of now, as of right this moment, they're right there as the toughest. Nothing against Ricky Cruz, nothing against Iron Man Ken Casa, the classic wrestling champion. And he'll be at Belleville, by the way, on October the 12th, defending his title against Adam Raw, I might point out. They're all tough guys, or they wouldn't be in this ring this long, or they wouldn't be at the top of the cards on SICW. But these two guys, oh boy, I don't know. Kick to the stomach, elbow to the head, punch to the stomach. Powers, Flanagan, Flanagan, Powers. To the ropes, clothesline almost takes Flanagan's head off. Flanagan rolls into the corner, whoa. When Ron Powers turns it on, there aren't many like him. He's changed over the years, his tactics have changed a little bit. He knows when he can turn it on, when he can't turn it on. He knows how much stamina he has and how much stamina he does not have. But boy, when he explodes, it's something else. And Flash Flanagan just found that out. Power squeezing the head of Flash Flanagan. And the crowd chanting, squeeze that head, squeeze that head. Right now, oh, a kick. And that might have been in the groin. I don't know if referee Jake King saw it or not. If he saw that was in the groin, that would have been a disqualification immediately. I guarantee you that. That's something that promoter Herb Simmons has, all, has definitely made a fact of life here that referee Jim Harris, the senior official, has backed him on. And if that had been right in the groin, and it was awful close, and Jay King had seen it, this match would already be over. But then, would that have been a good disqualification? You, the fans, probably wouldn't have been happy. So maybe if Jay King did see it, he was wise just to kind of turn his head the other way, knowing that somebody like Powers, he can take enormous amounts of punishment, enormous amounts of punishment, and still come back. And once again, we're talking about something all the big ones, all the great stars over the years can do. They can take punishment and still fight back. And I don't care if we're talking back in the Gene Kineski era, the Dick the Bruiser era, or we're talking about people now like Brock Lesnar. There are people who can take punishment and still come back. Powers and Flanagan. They are going to deliver punishment. Oh, well, if Ron had a problem with something that happened to his groin, so did Flash Flanagan, and then a clothesline knocks Flash right off that top rope. Flanagan dropped right across that top rope by Powers. Flying mare by Ron. Elbow drop into the chest by Ron Powers on Flash Flanagan. 
He brings Flanagan to his feet and pitches him through the ropes outside the ring. Partly, that gives Ron a chance to catch his breath. It also is a hard spill because that's a concrete floor out there that Flash Flanagan just landed on. Look out, Powers going outside the ring. He's going after Flanagan. Where are we going? Head first into the steel ring post by Ron Powers on Flash Flanagan. Ben Simon, uh-oh, look out. There goes his chair, he's right stuck in the middle. Come on, referee, save me, says Ben. Powers has that chair, Jay King saying, no, no, come on, put the chair back, put the chair, oh! And while they're arguing, you saw that kendo stick right across the back and the neck of Ron Powers by Flash Flanagan. Oh, you give Flash Flanagan an opening, you give him an inch, he's gonna take 10 miles. Flanagan on the attack, Flanagan on the attack against Ron Powers. Powers got caught outside the ring, he started listening to the referee and now he's paying the price because Flanagan was right there with that kendo stick across the back and the neck of Ron Powers. Flanagan knows this is not going to be a scientific match. He knows this is going to be a Donnybrook of the first degree. He knows it's going to be a war. Now he wants to bring a chair in just like Ron Powers grabbed a chair and Jay King trying to stop him putting his foot on that chair. Powers going back. He's grabbing a chair. What do we have here? Powers has a chair. Jay King says, oh, look out here. Wait a minute. They each have chairs. Powers, Flanagan, each with a steel folding chair. Oh, the crowd chanting. Look out. Oh, that one landed in the, in the hands and then a kick to the stomach. Look out, says Flanagan. And when he drew the chair back, Powers knocked down Jay King, the referee. He hit Jay King right in the head with the chair. King's down. He turns around. Oh, and Flanagan clobbers Ron Powers with a chair. The referee turns just in time to see Powers down, and he's counted out. He is counted out, and Flash Flanagan. Flash Flanagan has pinned Ron Powers probably only the second time that Ron Powers has been pinned here in SICW over the last, golly, over the last two years. Powers can't believe it. Powers can't believe it. He turned his head when he accidentally dropped the referee, Jay King, with the chair. Now he's going after the referee. What did you do? King said, I wasn't doing anything. I was just behind you. Powers and sense. Oh, Ron Powers. Look out. Is he going into the dress room after? Look out. He's Ron Powers going berserk. Ramming his own head into the press table, destroying the press table. Ron Powers just exploding. He grabs Ben Simon. And off goes Ron Powers. Sparky, 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 Sparky. Saturday, October 12th is a royal night for a rumble at the Belleville Brawl. The Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 262 brings wrestling explosion to the Scottish Rite on Frank Scott Parkway West in Belleville, Saturday, October 12th. Meet WWE star The Honky Tonk Man and me, Larry Matisek. A Belleville Rumble headline stars enter the ring every minute. Elimination when thrown over the top rope. Last man left wins. Powers, crews, flash, and more. For our tickets, call 235-3350. It's The Honky Tonk Man in a Belleville Brawl at the Scottish Rite, Saturday, October 12th. Farm music and fun. The place to party is Pop's nightclub and concert venue in Sojay. From Bruno Mars of the first U.S. tour of Nickelback to Flogging Molly of the Insane Clown Posse, 30 years of memories packed Pop's concert venue with more made at every new show. And there's a party at Pop's nightclub every night, a melting pot of friends enjoy the best in dance, rock, pop, and top 40 music until 5.30 a.m. Plus add a full game room. Check out all the action at PopsRocks.com. Then and now, the place to party is Pop's in Sojay. OJ. Let Custom Truck Upholstery give your vehicle a facelift. Visit us on 707 North 20th Street in East St. Louis, Illinois. Custom Truck Upholstery merges old world craftsmanship and attention to detail with the latest in modern technology to make your car, truck, boat, or motorcycle look like new. Call Custom Truck Upholstery at 618-875-9850. Liked it. The crowd is solidly aligned with Winona Little. The talented lady wrestlers were also a welcome addition to St. Louis. So from Wrestling at the Chase on July 27th, 1980, let's join Judy Martin against Winona Littleheart. Last from Judy Martin. Littleheart takes a long look at Judy Martin. 
Hammerlock by a little heart on, Judy. Little heart twisting that arm up behind the back of Judy Martin. Martin heads for the ropes. Little heart will have to release the grip and does so quickly. Little heart and Martin, both very cautious right now. No advantage either way at this point. They both had their moments. Finally, they tie up and Little Heart twists the arm of Judy Martin. The crowd urges on Winona Little Heart, but it's Martin who's able to come up with the arm twist arm bar combination. Look at the pressure she's putting into Winona Little Heart's wrist, bending that hand forward. And now into a hammerlock by Judy Martin on Winona Little Heart. Judy reaching in. What she did? She taking a bite. She took a bite. I think out of the finger of Winona Little Heart. And now while Martin and Riley argue, Martin on the blind side is strangling Winona Little Heart. There's Judy Martin again taking a bite into the fingers of Winona Little Heart. Chuck Riley trying to figure out what's going on. He's assuming that Martin was spreading the fingers and pulling one finger, which of course would be illegal. Any grip has to involve at least four fingers. Little Heart with a chop to the stomach of Judy Martin. And then Martin gouges the eyes of Winona Little Heart. Judy Martin opening up with some rough tactics against Winona Little Heart. A knee to the side of Winona's head. Martin lifts Little Heart and throws a punch into the throat of Winona Little Heart. Judy Martin. Proving to be a very tough, hard-nosed competitor. And Little Heart has been shaken by the attack from Judy Martin. <laughs> Little Heart battles back with a blow to the midsection. Judy Martin's in the hair again and a forearm smash levels Winona Little Heart. That was a legal blow, of course. It was the forearm. Martin bouncing the ears and the head of Winona. Judy Martin covers Winona Little Heart. At the count of two, Martin is flipped off by Winona. Winona Little Heart. Her father was a professional wrestler. But down she goes again, compliments of Judy Martin. Martin puts the throat of Little Heart over that top rope and then jerks the throat, the windpipe into the top rope. And Judy Martin is making this very miserable for Winona Little Heart, but Little Heart, a scrappy competitor, refuses to quit and a tomahawk chop flattens Judy Martin. That might buy Little Heart some time. She goes for the body press. Count of one and at two, Little Heart's pushed away. Five minutes of elapsed, five minutes left. Halfway home in the curtain raiser today on Wrestling at the Chase, and it's been a rough match between Judy Martin and Winona Littleheart. Martin lifting Littleheart and strangling her on the blind side of the referee. Everybody's expecting a body slam, and instead Martin, who's very strong, is strangling Littleheart. Riley running around trying to see what is happening around the throat. Now he catches Martin strangling Littleheart. And then Little Heart is dropped throat first across the top rope. A rather impressive display of strength from Judy Martin. Little Heart really groggy now. She has taken a beating from Judy Martin. Martin with the elbow smash as Little Heart came flying off those ropes. Judy Martin goes for the pin. At two, just before two, Little Heart refuses the break. Winona fighting back once more. She just will not quit. What a scrapper, Winona Littleheart. Tomahawk chopped to the throat, and that was right on the money. Judy Martin now gasping to get her win back, and Winona Littleheart goes into a war dance, dragging Judy Martin along. Another tomahawk chop. Littleheart tries for a pin, cannot get it. Winona Littleheart now, she's on the offensive and trying to polish off Judy Martin, a flying beal. Oh, the drop kick missed. The drop kick by Winona Littleheart missed as Judy Martin coolly stepped aside. Martin with a kick to the back of Winona Littleheart. Just when things started to go Winona's way, everything backfired because of that missed drop kick. 
Up and over. Hard spill by Winona. A little hard. Judy Martin with that backflip. Three minutes left. Chuck Riley taking a close look because it appeared as though Winona Littlehart could have been hurt in that spill. She's banged into the turnbuckles by Judy Martin. A kick to the stomach from Judy Martin. Another kick to the midsection from Martin. Littlehart hurled across the ring. Littlehart mounts the ropes. Oh, flying cross body block. Count of one, two, and three. What a spectacular maneuver by Winona Littlehart. Tossed into the corner, she used her head, got up on that second rope, leaped off the second rope with a flying cross body block, and flattened Judy Martin for the pin. It was a hard-earned victory, but a big victory for Winona Littleheart. Let's hear from Mickey Garagiola. In seven minutes and 24 seconds, the flying body slam. The winner, Winona Littleheart. From the World Series champion Tigers in 45, to the Gateway Grizzlies, to the 03 State Tournament Belleville East Lancers. A tradition in baseball and an even longer tradition in fine furniture and service. Miller Furniture, 1004 East Main in Belleville. Saturday, October 12th is a royal night for a rumble at the Belleville Brawl. The Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 262 brings wrestling explosion to the Scottish Rite on Frank Scott Parkway West in Belleville, Saturday, October 12th. Meet WWE star The Honky Tonk Man and me, Larry Matisik. A Belleville Rumble headline stars enter the ring every minute. Elimination when thrown over the top rope. Last man left wins. Powers, crews, flash, and more. For our tickets, call 235-3350. It's The Honky Tonk Man in a Belleville Brawl at the Scottish Rite, Saturday, October 12th. Flash Flanagan won the battle, he pinned Ron Powers, but did Flash win the war? The way Flash won and the way Powers went berserk after the bell? Well, the final chapter is not yet written for Powers and Flanagan, and those two are among the stars. On the card next Saturday, October 12th, at the Scottish Rite in Belleville. On top of everything is a Royal Belleville Rumble, and the Honky Tonk Man joins me for a meet and greet before action begins. Thanks to FOP Lodge 262 and SICW, because next Saturday in Belleville will be unforgettable. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him.